telling you no free pee pics. Are you comfy? I'm I'm good. Yeah. Okay, do you want a blanket? Oh, but let me drop in and get even cozier. <laughs> We do want adultish wines anyway. Okay, good. You're ready. <laughs> this is girl chat right now. A minute. Let's do Lena it. Lux. Welcome to Adultish Wines. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Look, the anxiety begins. <laughs> Why? You're like, oh, the camera, the red light is on, and immediately it's... I know. It is kind of like that. I feel like that um, on Nightcap, the show that we... That how we originally met. Yeah. That's how I feel like immediately on immediately on yeah like every syllable is now being judged yeah and watched but don't worry microscope. but don't worry we can edit <laughs> and you're so used to being in front of the camera yeah which <laughs> when when i'm in control of the right right right, right 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 don't worry i am your friend what do they say dory i'm your friend not food no oh fish yeah. are your friends fish are your friends not food. There it is. <laughs> kind of kind of goes with this. No, don't worry. We're friends. It's girl talk. Um, you're comfortable. You've got a blankie. Although the lights are hot, though, so let me know how that goes no, for you. No, it's good. Okay, you're fine. Good thing I'm anemic. <laughs> are You're anemic. I think that's like a thing with all women, right? Where they get cold quickly? Yeah. Not me. I run warm. Like, sweating to death. And you're wearing sweats. Yeah, it's just kind of the vibe I started, and now I can't get away from it. I mean, sometimes I do wear a tank top or something, but I'm also supporting my friend's podcast, so. Poor Horseman Podcast. What does it say? Poor Horseman Podcast, so this is their names. J.C., L.P., Don P., and Casey. So, hot as hell, though. Um, But thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So you are a content creator and an OnlyFans content creator. Yes. Our OnlyFans model. Whatever. They all work. Yeah. I'm so excited. A to spice pick... and girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited to pick your brain about that. Um, you're gorgeous. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a Botox. <laughs> I am. De- I need. Okay. So met on Nightcap, content creator, only fans. I know that you had an incredible weight loss journey and I want to start there because, and I actually don't know this, but it seems like it plays a part in your only fans content creation. Yes. Okay, so tell me a little... Can you just start telling me a little bit about your... 2017 is whenever I found out that my heart was enlarged. So my grandma died at a very young age from heart disease. Okay. And I had babies. And I had an EKG done, like, just regular physical... And one, they found that I had an extra valve on my heart. Oh, my God. And you felt nothing? I mean, I was I was morbidly obese. I was over 300 pounds. Okay. Um, but I was just like, you know, I can't keep up with my daughter, and I need to be able to move with her. So I had the EKG done. They were like, hey, it turns out you have this extra valve, which ironically is the way that my grandma passed away is because her valve was garbage so oh. if i ever end up having a situation that occurs guess what i have a built-in little valve to just replace the one that might be ruined anyway oh my gosh. um so i found out i had an enlarged heart when i found out i had the enlarged heart they were like you have to lose the weight so i went through like all these yo-yo diets and nothing was working mm-hmm. so i was like okay we'll do weight loss surgery but i was very adamant on choosing the sleeve because Every woman in my family had the bypass. Okay. And they lost the weight, but then they gained it back. And I was terrified of a nutty professor What is a moment. sleeve? That's just a type of surgery? Type um, of weight loss surgery? So basically, bypass is where they completely bypass the stomach. And I could be totally wrong, but they bypass the stomach and then it goes straight to, I believe, the small intestines. Okay. Um, so it just doesn't do what the body biologically was built to do. Okay. So the sleeve is where they get rid of 80% of the stomach. They bring you back to a toddler-sized tummy, so you have to retrain yourself how to eat. Right. And it is an organ, so it can stretch, which is what makes people turn into morbidly obese people. Um, So it only gives you an opportunity to fix your habit, Mm -hmm. to change it. So I got the sleeve in 2017, took 600 days exactly to lose half of my weight, 164 pounds, and then I was left with a meat skirt, is what I call it. What is a meat skirt? 
Like um, extra skin. Extra skin. Okay. It was oh a God. skirt of just my excess skin. No. No, Lena. <laughs> okay. My other other people, they've called it their meat aprons. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I had excess skin there. I had it in my arms. I had it in my back. I mean, it was just everywhere. Well, I mean, to be expected. Yeah. And so everyone was like, oh, you just have to try this oil try this moisturizer try these like slim wraps you remember those slim wrap things yeah definitely they tried to get me to do all these things and i was like okay i'll try them all i did like the woodwork i did like the what are those things called with the the fat burner thingies where they did the melty stuff i don't know that one you tried it all i tried everybody was like oh, you just have to try this method and that will make your skin shrink. And no, bitch, it's like a balloon. When you blow a balloon a hundred times over and you let it go, you're going to see that it's deflated and it has those extra ripples. Okay. So 2019, I had my first uh, skin removal surgery. And then 2021, no. Did I have it in 2020? I don't remember. These years Short have talker, all been messed up because of COVID. Yeah. Um, let's see. 2022. No. 2024. So <gasps> it was 2022. 2022 in December is when I had my thighs done. And okay. then January 2020. Okay. 2020 is when I had my first surgery. Skin okay. removal. So skin removal, lipo, um, uh, breast augmentation implants. Lots of tucking. Uh, and here I am. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. And you're able to keep up with your kids. Yes. Which is, I'm sure that was the main. They love it. That was the reason for doing it all, to be healthy and active. Yeah. Are you happy and content and, like, we're moving on with the body we have? I'm very happy. But, okay, so even whenever I was over 300 pounds, 328 pounds. I did boudoir. I took pictures. I loved myself. I was that bitch. I was hot. I was sexy. No one could tell me anything. Oh my God. I love that. Yes. And I never like looked at myself and I was like, you know, you slob or anything. Like, well, I shouldn't say never, but you know, we all have our down times. Yeah. But I never was like down on myself. Like, you're worthless because I see it a lot now from people of all sizes Mm -hmm. of all whatever reason it's like self-hatred across the way yeah um in any capacity even like your looks or you didn't do something right or you're not doing enough it's too common I'm trying to get better we are conditioned to hate ourselves girl I know and just these days social media and like Nothing helps. I mean, the things that we're putting ourselves through in life doesn't really help, you know? I mean, some things do, right? Like, for me, it took a lot of, like, looking in the mirror, right? And any time that I ever did have insecurities, because, again, you know, we all experience any reason to not like something Mm -hmm. or disagree with something that we see in the mirror. And every time I would ask myself, like, why don't you like your meat skirt? Like this meat skirt is, you know, your temple. This is what housed your children. This is what got you through those depressing days whenever you chose to eat your feelings. Like those are hard Mm -hmm. emotions to deal with. And sometimes you deal with it in the way of food. Yeah, And when you realize, like, your temple is doing things to protect you, like, that's, you, you know, love that. Don't, oh, shame on you. Right. Like, have your moment, feel bad about it, take accountability, and then make a change. Yeah, I just mean that I feel like as far as social media and even OnlyFans, which we're going to get into, I've never been the person that looks at social media or looks at someone that has everything, you know, the biggest house, the best looking partner, the best body, the best, but whatever. I've never really felt like social media makes me mad or sad or jealous in any way. But I do feel like as a whole society has taught us that if we're not doing those things, 
Oh, yeah. Than we should be. Or even, like, I think, like, men are looking at these beautiful, perfectly constructed, and sometimes face-tuned and AI'd women. That's what they're, that's what they're looking for. And then they look at a real person in real life, and it's like, well, there's this baddie on Instagram, though. You know? Sometimes. That's what I feel. I don't think And I think a lot of women look at women, too. Yes. In that same, with that same mindset. Yes. I think women condition other women to think that men think this way because men really don't give a shit. Like, they'll look and they'll be like, that's hot. But as long as there's a hole there, they don't care. Oh, yeah, for sure. You can say that. Yeah. (laughs) They don't give a shit. Yeah. Let that be clear to the viewer. They don't give a shit. Like, they don't give a shit. How you look, how you, anything. They say they do, but they really don't. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think so in some ways. And the ones that really, like, press the narrative of, like, looks, I don't think those ones are are worthy of your time. Anyone's They're time. insecure about something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're projecting. For sure. Um, mental health going through that going through that weight loss journey the surgeries i'm sure you had downtime you probably felt i don't know i don't want to put words in your mouth but i've had a couple surgeries and not anything crazy but i feel helpless i feel like i can't do anything i want to do more and i want to be involved and i'm having fomo and stuff mm-hmm. like that literally all of those things yeah i think when i first had the weight loss surgery i like went through a major depression because i was it was in that moment that I was like, wow, you are so fat and you have completely lost control that you had to go and have a surgery just to change your eating habits. Wow. Like that was the first time I'd ever felt like ill about myself in in that sense. And that's why it's important now when I talk to people because they're like, oh, you know, how did you do it? What do you think? I need to do this and do that. And I'm just like, choose to have this surgery because it's what's healthiest for you. It's mm-hmm. not a cheating mechanism. It's a tool, a tool only. Mm-hmm. Like, you can go right back into those patterns. It's the choice is yours. This is only a tool to get there. And if it's a tool for your benefit, like, why not take advantage? Yeah. Um, so that was that surgery. Clear coasting. I mean, raw dogging, like, mental warfare and life, right? Yeah. Were you in therapy? Not at that time. Okay. Raw dogging it. Yeah. (laughs) I think at that time, you know, 2017, we weren't... We weren't that big into therapy. Yeah. That was kind of... As a whole. No, I'm going to go to the Lulu. I'm going to go to the crazy house if I talk to a therapist. Not me. Right. That's for white people. It just wasn't like... Oh. Yeah. Okay. You know, like, that's what we were For sure. You know what? I hear from so many guests who sit in your spot. So many guests say that. Like, we don't go to therapy in my culture, whether it's Latino. It's so true. Black. Like, people are like, we didn't, that was not a thing that was told. We, like, we weren't told about that. Even reflect on TV, right? Like, TV is the greatest thing that millennials grew up with and, like, as our examples. Mm -hmm. If anybody was on TV getting therapy... It was a white family. And when it was... We are fucked up. Well, when it was, <laughs> they didn't show a regular schmegular person like you and me getting therapy. That didn't make sense. It was the crazy fucked up person. Right. So we were all like, well, I'm not that fucked up. And I'm not that culture. So clearly, I'm fine. Right? Yeah. How old are you? 35. Okay, I'm 34. Yeah. I'm trying to, like, picture the shows that I was watching. Lizzie McGuire, Boy Meets World. Everybody Hates Chris. <laughs> Everybody Hates Chris. I didn't watch that. Really? <laughs> Everybody Hates Chris? Yeah. What is that? Um. Everybody Loves Raymond. I watched that with my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch Everybody Hates Chris. Okay. It was, um... I'm trying to think of the character, like the main character. I'll Google while it's, you're talking. He is a kid, but it was an adult voice. Okay. And I can't think of the character, the the actor's name. But, you know, it shows like a regular, like, POC person um, living day to day through the 
Oh, Terry Amer- Crews? Yeah. Okay. Well, Terry Crews is the dad. Okay. But Chris is, I can't recall that Chris is, uh, like, narrator. Well, anyway, everybody hates Chris. I didn't watch that show. You should watch that show. <laughs> it's hilarious, even okay. to this day. Okay. And as a person, like, I grew up in poverty, so I, I knew about food stamps. I knew about everything that was represented in that oh and they're talking about that in that show yeah because i grew up with food stamps too so but i never saw that on tv i didn't know that was our tv show that was like oh that's me that's my family they're crazy they're cuckoo like oh see that's kind of cool yeah so we saw that but there was no therapy in that show right so okay we only saw therapy in white people shows well hopefully now yeah (laughs) Hopefully now everyone's, but, everyone's starting to feel more comfortable doing it yes, for the past few It's a years, very normal least. thing now. When COVID happened, everybody was like, okay, I'm jumping on the on the therapy band. Or else I'm going to jump off something else. Yes. Scary. <laughs> People's mental health went. <laughs> I know. It that changed. was scary. Okay. Are you in therapy now? Yes. Okay. Once a week. Once a week. Yeah. Yeah. I go to a psychologist. Okay. Weekly. Um... She's amazing. Yeah. Big, big therapy guy over here. I go twice a month now. Um, Difference between a psychologist and a therapist is a psychologist can prescribe. Is that the only difference? Psychiatrists can prescribe. Psychologists, they study your brain and your behaviors and they can um, diagnose you. Oh, okay. Okay. And And they really go through the work of like, not that therapists don't because they do as well. I don't know the licensing or requirements, Mm -hmm. uh, schooling, education, whatever. But I know that they're able to go through these therapies of like um, EDMR therapy and, um, oh my gosh, what is it? Cognitive? Oh. Something? I don't know. You know. Yeah. I've heard that term. (laughs) Okay. So... And you have, you told me you were, you are diagnosed with complex PTSD. Yes. Anxiety, depression. Mm-hmm. And Hashimoto's. Which Hashimoto's. But that's... Different from... Yeah. Different doctor. Different doctor. Okay. I want to talk about Hashimoto's because I've only, I just saw someone probably close to a year ago. I saw this girl, an influencer, talking about she was trying to reverse her Hashimoto's. And I'm just not familiar with what that is, but I was Googling a little bit. And it worsens as you get older. Is that what it is? You're like, don't "Don't tell me that. (laughs) (laughs) What is Hashimoto's? Um, And how did you get that diagnosis? Like, so second surgery, um, I had my thighs done. And when I had my thighs done, you can't walk. Like, you're there, you're like bedridden for 12 weeks, you know? And unfortunately, during that time, uh, something really tragic happened in my personal life. Okay. Um, I'm like trying to figure out the words. So basically, my complex PTSD happened whenever it developed as I was a child. I went through something traumatic. Okay. And when that happened, um, your body creates like patterns. And when it recognizes, the, or your mind does, and when your mind recognizes these patterns in different forms, it triggers the complex PTSD. So when this traumatic event happened, I was vulnerable because I couldn't move. I was, you know, sh- stressed and, like, yeah. unable to do anything. And, and I'm, I have open wounds, you know, needing to be healed. So I was vulnerable. Um I was done dirty by an adult, which was something that triggered my childhood. Mm -hmm. It was like a multitude of similar but extremely different events that caused my mind to just spiral in a way that I was unfamiliar with. Yeah. And to the point where I was like, I need help. Like, I need help. Like, I'm scared now. Never in my life did I ever have these these amount of dark thoughts Mm -hmm. um and so my psychologist was like you definitely have a trigger it is the complex ptsd but there is something else going on it could be diabetes 
It could be your thyroid. It could be a number of different things. You need to go see an endometriologist. Okay. Or I'm sorry, an endocrinologist. So I'd never been to one before. Um, but I went to go visit her and she did a blood panel test and she's like, I think it's Hashimoto's, but I'm going to check for diabetes and I'm going to check for X, Y, and Z. She got the blood work back and she was like, it's Hashimoto's. So that's, it's a diagnosable, like common, like, I know this is so different from endometrio- endometriosis, but yes. I just, what I hear of that is like, doctors don't see it right away. You have to go a million times to kind of get somebody's attention about it. You didn't feel that way with Hashimoto's. They were immediately... I think that I'm very grateful for my psychologist um, who brought it to my attention mm-hmm. because I think if I were to gone to a regular doctor, they would have said, you know, vitamin D deficiency, which is a, is a signal to Hashimoto's or um, a vitamin B... Uh, No, is it? It's vitamin D. It's, um, I think iodine levels are low. There's multiple, multiple like flags. Right. Um, and so they would have just been like, oh, take your B12. Mm -hmm. Oh, take your vitamin D. Oh, go for a walk outside. You just need to get the sun. Yeah. Um, I think that's what majority of doctors would recommend. Um, but I think the fact that my psychologist was like, specifically get these blood works and blood panels done and when you go visit the endocrinologist ask for these things specifically yeah you were well equipped yes to advocate for yourself yes yeah okay and i mean honestly when i went to the doctor um and i told her you know my concerns and she went down a whole panel of questions and she was like it's either this or diabetes or this this and that especially because i have a history of diabetes in my family So when she got the stuff back, she was like, not diabetes, Hashimoto's, your thyroid is beyond the point of repair. It's broken, like not fixable. What causes that? Um, Vitamin D deficiency. Okay. Iodine deficiency. Complex PTSD. The stress on your body. Oh, wow. And your gut can cause long-term health issues yes like not mental health body health literally isn't that wild so here i am thinking like i lost all this weight i got rid of the skin i'm in therapy i'm doing the healing i'm taking care of myself i'm eating my fruit i'm eating whole raw foods like i had switched to vegan for years All for them to tell me, oh, hey, turns out that the shit you went through when you were a kid, it's come back to bite you in the ass. You did all this work to escape this just so it can say, no, you don't get rid of me. And that's terrifying. Yeah, that's a lot to digest. So it also triggered the complex PTSD again. And it was just like two different things like going head to head for me to like try to manage. Wow. And fortunately you can take medicine. Um I respect people who take medicine for depression, anxiety, etc. That was not the direction I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. I literally like did this whole life transformation so I could avoid being on meds the rest of my life. Yeah. And Again, I respect those people that have chemical warfares in their brain that have to take these supplements, um, but mine was not a chemical warfare it, as far as the depression, anxiety, et cetera goes. Hmm. The Hashimoto's was, but that was with my thyroid. Okay. So, you know, I asked my doctor, like, what do we do? So we go through therapy for the complex PTSD. I was seeing her like two, three times a week and I had constant communication with her like via text and um, voice memos, et cetera. And I felt like I was being needy and she was just like, dude, it's okay. Like yeah. you need that hand to be held right now and that's okay. Yeah. You are Love literally that. a 30-year-old woman like dealing with all these different things and your brain is recognizing these patterns as a child. So right now you are a child who needs their hand held. It's okay. And I think like hearing that and knowing I could 
fall back on her, fall back on my dad, my mom, my partner, my Mm -hmm. family. Um, That helped tremendously. But yeah, now I'm on Hashimoto's medication. Okay. And I'm as healthy as I can be. Yeah, not good, not good. Wow. And so that is something that you will live with. Yes. On this, and you'll take the medicine. Yes. And you avoid, I saw that you, like, kind of have to avoid some foods. I am really, like, slim pickings with gluten. Like, I'll eat it once in a while, but otherwise I avoid gluten. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but, like, it's your gut health. It all comes from not only, like, your mental health issues that you've carried with you your entire life, but your gut health. Okay. For 28 years, I was living, you know, eating McDonald's, Burger King, oily foods, you know, cake, whatever I wanted, and in exorbitant amounts. Right, and you because you were a binge eater. Yes. Okay. You know, when I was morbidly obese, there's no yeah. lie. You can say, you know, anything. Like, unfortunately, I was a binge eater. I yeah. wasn't aware of the unhealthy factor that it was, but... I am now, but back then I wasn't aware. It is so hard to stop. Um, (laughs) I feel, I think on a a much smaller scale, but at times when I'm going through things, it was just my 10 year anniversary of my mother's passing away. And I wouldn't call myself a binge eater in life. Like, I mean, I will enjoy a full sandwich and I'm like, I'm too full. I shouldn't have eaten all that, you know? But when it does come time to kind of being around the traumatic or remembering hard times, I will overindulge, feel sick, and then also do dessert, you know? And I'm saying on a much smaller scale, I'm not, like, hiding in my room shoveling food, but I do enjoy, I feel relief eating. I think everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. It's important to indulge in your feelings when your body and your mind is telling you like this is how this is how we're going to cope Mm -hmm. or heal Mm -hmm. and those are two different things but this is how we're going to deal with this moment right now and once it's said and done there's no point in beating yourself up for it yeah it's take accountability make a decision and move past it. Yeah. And I've done well in that in so many other ways, but specifically I was talking to my sister around the, I think it was the day before she's like, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm actually doing pretty okay preparing for this anniversary, except for I'm eating a lot and it's making me feel sick. And so instead of like giving myself the option to order DoorDash tomorrow and like too much food, I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to make myself a really nice meal and enjoy that meal as my indulging that's and that's what I kind of so I'm growing and like I'm acknowledging I think that's great I don't want to do that that didn't make me feel good in the moment it did but afterwards I don't feel good but I'm not beating myself up for it but I'm gonna choose I'm gonna choose a different path exactly and on the day of I'm gonna make myself a lovely meal at home maybe you'll read a little bit but (laughs) it's gonna be healthy and not you know DoorDash and a million dollars and all that thing all those things so I think that's a great decision but I think that it's important I think that a lot of people do that you know I'm saying like oh it was on a smaller scale and it is um also sorry about your mom oh thank you that's okay it was yeah 10 years it's a while but um I personally know people who binge eat and you know can't stop and I think that a lot of people who've never experienced those feelings are probably like I mean just stop yeah. It's that simple. A thousand Stop percent. Stop full. Portion control. Choose something else. Eat an apple. Eat an apple. If you're hungry, eat an apple. Yeah, but it's just not... It's Logical. It's a mind fuck. Yeah. So, thank you if, for sharing Yeah, that. if I if I could just eat a fucking apple, <laughs> don't you think I would have done that already, bitch? <laughs> I need your goddamn help. Yes. Wow. Okay, so you've been through it. We've all been through it. We've Everybody's been through, been through I it. I say that too. I say, listen, my life is crazy and chaotic and I've been through some stuff, but it's not more unique and more crazy than anyone else sitting next to me. And that's one of the reasons why I just love having people on telling their stories because I do feel like you can get in your own head and like, 
my life sucks, I'm depressed, this is that, you know, but it's like, Don't also, you worry. also other people are, like, let's hear about how We're, other people... All of our lives suck. All, all of us are depressed. <laughs> But together. <laughs> but we're in it together. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all that. I think that's going to be helpful for lots of people. Um, okay, so when did you start your OnlyFans? My first surgery when I had the skin removal. During that? Right after. Okay. Was your... I don't have... Is OnlyFans an app or is it just a website? It's a website. Okay. I've not been on OnlyFans, so I actually don't know really how you it works. You should get on <laughs> <laughs> Plug, plug, plug. Um, did you get on thinking, like, this is going to be my niche? No. Okay. So I actually got on from another traumatic story. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, how did your OnlyFans journey start? I... I had built a following on Instagram. I had like a hundred and some odd, a hundred thousand some odd followers, right? And everybody was asking me, are you going to get on? Are you going to get on? Are you going to go on? Because at the time and now, like my closest friends are, can I say porn stars? Corn stars. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) And everyone's like, I see you just hanging out with them, hugging on them. Like, when are you going to? And I was like, eh, you know, whatever I feel like. We'll yeah, see. and you already had done, like, boudoir photo shoots yeah. and stuff like that. You were already kind of into yes. that. And I had these, like, nudes just in my phone. Taking up space that yeah. you're paying three ninety nine a month to Apple for, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but, so I had my surgery, and literally I'm going through recovery, like, less no, it was actually a month after my surgery. A month after my surgery. Do you remember the winter storm? The snowpocalypse of Houston? Yes. Okay. So That I, was in February of 2021. Yes. Yeah. Valentine's Day weekend. Yes. I went to my dad's because I was recovering from my surgery and I was like, I I have an upstairs bedroom and I need to be in my downstairs of my house, so I just need to stay with my dad and my stepmom, and they'll take care of me while I recover from my surgery during the winter storm. Anyways, while I'm there, the pipes have burst at my house, (laughs) and for three days, remember, we had ice, and we couldn't drive anywhere. Yeah. And I couldn't see the inside of my house. There was no electricity. There was no anything. Just water constantly going down the second floor and the first floor flooding my home for three days. Three days, girl. So I tell my dad finally, I was like, Dad, I need you to take me home. There's ice on the the roads, but like it's enough that you can drive. And if you don't, I'm going to drive myself and I'm not allowed to drive while I'm recovering from my surgery Mm -hmm. so if I die it's on you oh my god guilt trip (laughs) so my dad's like everything's fine don't worry like we turned off the water whatever or we had the water dripping because you know that's what we were told Mm -hmm. um get home the whole house is flooded call my insurance that I've been paying for 10 years on time never had a late payment it's a scam they say oh you know what burst pipes are not covered under your insurance Get out. I need to call mine tomorrow. Please do. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Those motherfuckers. So okay. I get lawyers involved. As Every single should. lawyer that looks across my stuff is like, this is not worth my time. This is going to be a long, long case. If and you, you were not the only one. Everyone in Houston, I'm yes. sure, was going through And they were like, similar. we need money up front if you can't give us a retainer. They wanted like, tens of thousands of dollars for a retainer because it was going to be a huge case and we were definitely going to win, but I didn't have that kind of money. Yeah. Like I just had surgery. I haven't worked in a month because yeah. I just had surgery. So yeah, my so you started only fans. all the walls were melted off of the, 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 every wall was gone because it was just literally melted from the water. The ceilings are gone. All my clothes, all my furniture, The floors, the ceilings, like, everything destroyed. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, 
everyone's like, you should just leave. And I was like, uh, I still have a whole entire house and a mortgage. Like, I can't just leave. This is not just going to be like, oh, it's a bump on your credit. No big deal. Right. I was like, fuck it. I called my dad. I called my mom. I called my siblings. I called my cousins and uncles. And I come from a Muslim background. No Sat shit. them down. And I said, I need you guys to know that I have a platform on Instagram. I have been begged to join a, another platform, OnlyFans. It's going to cost me over $100,000 to fix my house and I don't have that money. So my dad goes and he gets his checkbook and he's like, how much? He's like, don't do it. I said, dad, I love you, but you can't, you can't, you can't. You're going to have to love that your daughter is going to shake her ass on the internet to make money. I, whoa. Okay. Okay. Have any of those family members disowned you? No. Love Every that. single one of them said, Get it, girl. I support you. I love you. I respect you. Do what you gotta do. Oh my God. If I could do this for you, I would. And every single one of my family members backed me up like, I don't wanna see the shit you're making, but I'm your biggest cheerleader. Yeah. Oh my, my mom God, was like, I, love that. I wish I could post on Facebook. I was like, please, God, <laughs> do not. Where I'm always telling my friends and family, like, share, subscribe. You're like, don't like, don't touch, don't look. Yes. Don't look in this direction. Wow. Oh, my God. Okay, great. Supportive family. Yeah. Love that. So you started. I started. And I was very lucky, very blessed, like... The people that said that they were interested in me joining definitely subscribed. Definitely. Because it can be, um, if you don't have a following somewhere else, you have to get followers on OnlyFans. Like how, Correct. It's kind of, you got to have a following to make money. That's not true. Okay. I think that's a common misconception uh, from gatekeepers. Oh. A lot of people who make a lot of money on OnlyFans have faceless accounts. Really? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> I mean, there are things that you have to go in not expecting anything in the beginning. You yeah. have to hustle hard. It's just like a regular job. You have to create content constantly. You have to serve egos just like a regular job. Mm. And for me, like... If I feel if it's not genuine, then it's not quality. Mm. So it does have to be something that you personally are invested in. And so for me, mental health is incredibly important to me. So knowing that I'm able to offer. Yeah. So do you do that? Are you fully naked or are yes. you fully naked? Yes. And people subscribe to your content for videos Videos, voice memos, messaging, ratings. And your primary focus is you speak about mental health. So I try not to say, like, tell me about your mental health. Because... That's going to scare a man who doesn't want to talk about mental health. We have created a society where we bash men for speaking up about their mental health. And I don't know if you've ever seen... Have you ever seen the movie The Biggest Whorehouse in Texas? No. Dolly Parton? No. Okay. It's one of my most favorite movies. Okay. I still have it on DVD. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so she's a madam, but she used to be a sex worker that owns the home now. And it was the chicken coop here in Texas that Marvin Zindler himself, like, showcased to the world... Um, she was sleeping with the sheriff. Okay. She was offering him mental health, like, services, you know? Like, she would soothe his ego, and she would talk to him about his problems and work his way through those problems. But at the end of the day, he wanted to see some tits. He wanted to see some ass. And he wanted to 
to fuck her. Yeah, and he didn't really want to know he was being therapized. Exactly. And no man ever does. And so that's what you're doing. Yes. I talk to them about their problems. I talk to them about their their dead bedroom. I talk to them about... What's a dead bedroom? Oh, they're not having sex with their spouse. I try to have sex with her, but she doesn't want to. Well, why? Why doesn't she? Oh, well, you know... She says that, you know, she never gets anything done. I was like, well, what has she asked you? Well, she's always nagging me. Well, why? Well, it's just like when I get off of work, I just want to kick off my shoes and do this and that. But what, are, what is she doing? Well, she's also working. Well, when she gets home, what is she doing when she gets home? Well, she's cooking. What do you think you could do better to serve her? They don't think that they could just be... Like, just listen. Uh-huh. When you got titties bouncing, you're, you're in a hypno, hypno, hypnosis. So when you're having these conversations and you're just like, hey, <laughs> what would you do if I asked you to take the trash out? And they're just like, I would take the trash out in a heartbeat, baby. <sighs> oh, my God. And I, I know people think I'm a terrible person for doing that, but it's like... I don't think you're a terrible person. I'm not trying to sleep with your man. Yes, I'm taking your man's money because I'm offering him a service, but I promise you I have you and your benefit in my in my mind. Do some of these men say out loud, like, I'm not supposed to be on OnlyFans? Or, like, my wife doesn't know I'm on OnlyFans? Oh, yes. But, okay. Uh, okay, so I like to call those... My little piggies, because those ones actually want me to go and research and find the girl and then threaten them. I'm going to tell her. Well, they'll, they're getting off that's on That's their kink. Oh, my God. Loving this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. They want to be like, I've heard that also men like to be like berated. Oh, yes. And will you do that? Yeah. So where... That's a kink of mine. What are your... Do you have boundaries on OnlyFans? Like, for yourself? I mean, not that you have to, like, publicize, but... So... Has there been something that someone's asked of you that you're like, I don't do that? Or, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of them want personal items, and... Oh, to be sent to them. Yes, and there are limits. Like panties. Like toenail clippings. Ah! Yes. And you won't do it? No. I'd rather send toenail clippings than underwear. I would much rather send underwear than toenail clippings, baby. Why? You're not getting my toenail clippings. My <laughs> my nail lady gets them and she tosses them in the trash. <laughs> Wait, what? I, what are you going to do with them? You did? I just imagine them like making a bowl of cereal with my pain. Pay me for my toenail clippings. No. <laughs> no. Okay, so panties... Kind of fine. Really? But they're like, go work out. Go work out. I want your chonies. Can I ask, and if you're uncomfortable, don't say, but can I ask how much, like, that goes for? It depends. So, like... How much does, like, a video subscription do you go for? How much does a pair of your workout underwear go for? So, workout underwear is, like... I... Okay, some women will get very mad at me on OF by the way that I price myself. And at the end of the day, like being an OnlyFans content creator, when you are doing that type of work, not all OnlyFans content creators, but, you know, us Spice Girls, say it. Okay. We're sex workers, digital sex workers. There are sex workers that are on the streets and some of them will charge you this rate for this rate for what you get. And then you got those that charge this rate. That, that's none of my business. Mm-hmm. Charge what Whatever you want to charge to each their own. Please don't get upset with me that I'm charging an exorbitant amount because that's what my worth is to me. You're allowed to charge whatever you want to charge. And that's none of my business. hmm but I'm going to mind my business and you mind yours. So for me, when I charge videos, I mean, I've had men who want something extremely specific in a video and pay me $1,000. For like a how long video? 10 minutes? 7 minutes? I mean, how long it takes to 
flick your thing. bean and say their name. Yeah. So you get where you need to go. Okay. Yeah. So a thousand dollars for that. For something as intimate as my personal item that I had to go out and wear all day. I mean, I'm not buying anything cheap. My stuff is quality. I'm not giving you a pair of like fruit of the loom, like grandma <laughs> panties. I'm giving you. Someone might like that. I mean, and they do, but that's not what I wear. Right, right. For the right, right price, I will. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make that clear. But for, you know, a nice song that you want me to wear all day, you want me to go to the gym, you know, we don't even want to wear our thongs in the gym. We just want to wear our leggings, but I'm doing this. See, I've never worked out. I've always worked out with underwear on. To each their own. No <laughs> judge me. It's a different conversation. Okay, continue. Yeah, like, and that'll just get caught up in there, none of that, <laughs> which is why they want to buy it from the gym. So, yeah. yeah, you could sell a pair for $500. Wow. That is your DNA. Oh. They are getting your possession. No, that's, it's, I, I don't want to say crazy as in, like, you're crazy, but that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's expensive. And that's okay. Like, if that is what you want, there is a rate for that. Yeah. And to each their own. Like, no judgment on anybody. That's so, just me and what I'm worth. Right. No, I love that. I think that that makes sense. Charge what you want to charge. It's nobody's business. I mean, if you go, like, even if you take the underwear away, I have people who pay for my pants, my shirt, you know, a bra of mine, um, a headband that has been purchased. Like, I've had women purchase things for me simply because they like the item and I no longer wear it. I'm about to open up like a, a Instagram closet because I have clothes that I can't fit into anymore that I want to just sell or pass on to somebody Mm -hmm. that, you know, here, buy this $50 shirt for five bucks and $10 total. So you can get it shipped to you. Like, wow. You go to Kim Kardashian and she's selling the shit like a white t-shirt for a thousand dollars. No, there's a market. Yeah. There's a market for everything. You just got to find it. You just got to find it. And you already have a following. Okay, so are people... Do you have, like, a block of time that you spend on OnlyFans? Or are you, like, chatting all day? It's usually right when I wake up. I'll communicate as much as possible until I have to get the day going for my day-to-day. Or right before I go to bed. If there's something specific that somebody is paying me for my time... Then I'll make the time for them. Okay. I will make the time for all of my clients as long as you're paying me for my time. But otherwise, subscribers, morning and nights. When Is you're it waking ever up live? with a stiffy or you're going to bed with one. You got Is choices. it ever live? Do you um Is there, is I've done live a couple of times. Uh like whenever I have like uh group shoots, you know? Mm. Um and everything is of course consensual. Um, but you know, sometimes we have group shits where we all have a ton of these type of content creators creating content or modeling, getting photos done, making videos, whatever have you. And we'll all go live and, you know, just chat or do, you know, <laughs> chat tr- or do strange things <laughs> for a little bit of change. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I'm just sitting here really thinking I'm in the wrong job market. I am. It is. It is mentally taxing. Prepare yourself for that. And I don't think I have the balls to do it. It's not. And I honestly, I can't even take a photo of myself in public. (laughs) Like I'm so awkward. A lot of it is done in private. (laughs) No, I don't think I'm genuinely interested in doing it. However, no shade. Like, yeah. And all the snaps and claps. Like, what the fuck? You're doing... doing Well, and that's the thing that's craziest to me is I'm like... I have women all the time just like, I wish I could. And I'm like, you could. Shame has a lot of, 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 you know, reason as to why a lot of people do. And I get it. I respect it. You know, I understand. But... Please don't think that you won't make money because you will. Please don't think that you're not worthy because you are. Like, there is a type for 
everyone. I mean, here I am. I've got scars all over my body. And to the average American, that is extremely unattractive. And yet I'm one of the top performers on OF. Like, when I say they don't care, they're extremely happy to be there. And they're extremely ready to support. You just got to let them know that you're, that you exist. Mm Mm-hmm. I do love that about your content on Instagram that you are very transparent. I just saw a video of some, like you, you know, posted a comment that someone said like, oh my gosh, you, you don't have any scars or like, how did that happen? And you were like, let me be very clear. (laughs) I've had surgeries. I have scars. Look at all of this. And I think that that, I don't know. I mean, I would, I think that's an attractive quality in a human for somebody to be transparent. So I can only imagine for the average American, average person, like you said, on OnlyFans, it's you're saying that they don't care what you look like or whatever, but like, I think that that's an attractive quality too. You're owning it. Definitely. I think so. When I first got into boudoir, I realized like I never saw any like big girls modeling. I mm-hmm. never, like, we had our toured models, but even though they were toured models, you never saw them in lingerie. You yeah. only saw them in like, you know, cool, trendy clothes, but there was nothing like risque or anything like that. And so I saw one girl one day and it was funny because it was what an ex-boyfriend, he was like scrolling on social media. And I think he thought I was going to get jealous or something. And I was like, give me your phone. Like this bitch is hot and her body looks just like mine, but she's half naked. Like I followed her, started DMing her we're good friends now. No way. I was like, I cannot believe that I found you through my ex-boyfriend, like, his scrolling. And I was so happy that it was, like, a body similar to mine. At uh-huh. the time, you know, when I was a plus-size girl, her name's Bella MK, okay. um, by the way. Uh, and she is also an OF content creator. Seeing her and seeing her body, I was just infatuated. And then... Shortly after, we all saw Ashley Graham and we're like, oh, my God. Finally, a woman with curves, like, that can represent us all. Yeah. And, you know, America Ferreira, Real Women Have Curves, that movie, Mm -hmm. I think that was a spark when I was, you know, in high school or middle school. But even now, like, I've had all these surgeries and you don't see many women anywhere that have these scars even just the tummy tuck scar, you know, there's so many like literal hundreds of thousands of women that have had this surgery done, yeah. whether that be the mommy makeover or simply the excess skin removal. We don't see it. Like, I would when say you it's do, very, um, it's hidden. tatted up, but, but people are like, do anything to hide it. Yeah. So I was Which like, also like, do what you want to no do. No shade. Yeah. No shade. But also like, I remember speaking to one girl and saying like, Hey, can you like, let me know who your doctor is, this and that. And no shade to her. She, everyone's entitled to their reasoning for why they either gatekeep or they're just simply keeping it a secret. You know, they're dealing with their own things, but it was clear that she had had work done and she was just like, Oh no, uh, this is how I was made. And I was like, cool. Do you? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to be upfront about it. I mean, the fact that I can go to my family and tell them, hey, look, you're going to see, you might see my ass on the internet. Like, I don't know another way that you could have gone about that. I mean, that is so, like, what else were you going to do? Wait till someone saw something and have that awkward conversation? Like, I would have been personally, I mean, again, you do you, but like, kind of feel like you went about it the right way. Telling I mean, I've, I have friends who they, like, they still don't. and They still don't know? Like, no, no, no. Like, uh, their family members oh, don't know. Oh, still don't know. But are you running the risk of them finding out one day and just getting that awkward phone call? Yeah. I'm like, you better get Also, it. what if they're a subscriber and they find you? you that know, has maybe? happened, and that is a crazy-ass story. Tell Not with me, me personally, oh, but somebody. like... Yeah, no, yeah. I can imagine. This girl found out that her stepdad was subscribed. <gasps> yeah. And she was much younger. She was, like, 
a new bird in OF. Yeah, it was really horrifying. And obviously he knew because he knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And you can see all your subscribers. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. But we don't, we don't normally get faces on our subs. It can be a blank profile picture. Oh, you, the person doesn't have to show Correct. their face. And their name can be Joe Schmidt. It could be Four Horsemen. <laughs> and we have no idea who they are. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. Okay. And that's why I say, like, I have had people near and dear to me in my personal life subscribe and me not be aware that that's who they are when it is and then finding out later on how does that make you feel like I think that's kind of why I try to be transparent across the board because I'm just like I kind of have to be yeah so that way you know oh I got screenshots bitch so do I If you want to come and tell my mom that my pussy's on the internet, she already knows. What 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 now? Do you have any sort of qualms, concerns, thoughts about that your body in its entirety has been, is out there? Like, do you ever have a moment where you think, damn, don't love that? I think the biggest struggle that I am concerned about it's like the future of my children and, you know, the thought of them being bullied or, you know, whatever. And their parents. They're, they're the parents of their friends. Yeah. Um. So my kids are very young and I have had conversations with them. Not in depth like, hey, this is what mommy's doing. But they know that I take photos. Mm-hmm. And we leave it at that. Okay. Um. And I'm curious, like, what will happen in the future? Yeah. What I will say is that my children are trained in martial arts to protect themselves in the case of self-defense. And they don't go without. So if anybody ever tries to give them shit, what can you say that, one, they can whoop your ass if they need to, or two, like... They have nice clothes. They have full bellies. They have a roof over their head. Nice shoes. Like, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Kids are going to be bitches whether mm-hmm. somebody's mom is an OnlyFans content creator, works at the grocery store, is an editor of a magazine. It has nothing to do with – it's just kids are assholes. I yeah. mean, that's really just a fact, unfortunately. I mean – for at least a little bit of their life, you know, and they grow out of it. But, like, kids are going to bully. Yeah. That is going to happen, um, which is terrible. And I can't wait for the day that, like, as a generation that doesn't happen. I think we're very far mm-hmm. off. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I would – that would – if I were to ever think about starting an OnlyFans, that would be a concern of mine. Or, like, when it first kind of started coming out, I was like, oh, I would do it, but my niece, you know. But now, I mean, my niece wouldn't care. My sisters would be like – Okay, weird, but you do you, you know? But, like, it is a, it is the reality of the situation is, like, your shit is out there. I always try to tell myself, like, some of the most successful women that we know, um, they have content out there. Mm-hmm. Dolly Parton is a prime example. Kim Kardashian is a prime example. Cardi B, like, these are phenomenal women. Megan Thee Stallion. Who people look up to. Yeah. And I admire. Mean, all of these people, they, they'll they write, you know, wonderful things about these people. All that to be said. Like, there is that imagery on the internet. And it's sex. Like, yeah. everybody does it. Right. And if you're not, you're thinking about it. So, get over it. Yeah. Well, also, I think the way of the world, we're moving into... That being more accepted. You would think so. I mean, slowly. Like, we are, but also we're also reversing in Texas. Oh, well, Texas has been Texas (laughs) at all times. One thing about Texas is it's going to be Texas. Yeah. (laughs) 
Pornhub. Yeah. Pornhub is temporarily banned because of an age restriction limitation, which I think you should be 18. I agree with that. I think yes. that's fine. But I guess they're trying to figure out how to Here's the thing that. that Pornhub is putting out there. Like, great. We're, we can put that they need to be 18. They can prove prove all these things. But at the end of the day, like, it doesn't fucking matter. If a kid wants to get into porn, he's going to get into it. Yeah. He's going to use his daddy's license. He's going to use his daddy's credit card. Right. They just have to do what they have to do to not be held liable for any exactly. BS. Um, and so when you when you say that, but then your kid gets on there anyways, like, who's, whose fault is this? Is it Pornhub's or is it the parents? And as a parent, I have to do, take responsibility and put parental guidance and have those uncomfortable conversations with my kids. Mm-hmm. And, you know, children are at a certain age. And when they get to a certain age, you need to say what you got to say. With my children, I say, if you are wanting to experience, that is totally fine. Experience with yourself right now. You've got so many years Mm -hmm. to experience with others and experience online. But right now... You need to just experience with yourself. I don't shame them. I don't ask questions. I give them the privacy that they need. I don't know if they're doing it or not, Mm -hmm. but that's none of my business. My business is that you're not looking at this kind of stuff on social media. You're not looking at it online. You're not accessible to it on TV. Mm -hmm. And that I know where you're at and what you're doing when you're not around me. Mm -hmm. Those are things that are within my control. Yeah. And as a parent, I do my due diligence. And I I hope that I stay doing my due diligence. But it frustrates me that, you know, jurisdiction, no. Legislative mm-hmm. is putting these requirements to verify your ID for what purpose. I mean, it's also probably just another reason to get people's information. That's, that's the hard yeah. reality. Yeah. And that's why Pornhub is taking a stand. Sorry. We can go without your money right now. And it's been funny because I've been commenting on all the the news outlets. Just, hey, don't forget to subscribe to your local artist, your local yeah. creator. Okay, so have you ran into, like, for the subscri- subscribers that you do know what they look like, if they do have a photo or you do know some of them, have you ran into anyone no. in person? No. No, and I'm actually really explicit on telling people or men, um, listen, I'm actually, like, very scared of you, IRL. I am extremely scared of you. So if you see me, like, and you want to call my name and wave, that's okay. Please do not run up on me. Please do not come and hug me. Please do not touch me. And all that is true. I've had very scary scenarios with people who do know me from Instagram, and it is extremely scary. One dude, I mean, I straight punched him because he grabbed me from behind, (gasps) and I'm trained in martial arts. And you grab me from behind, and I don't know you, and there's no warnings, and I'm vulnerable. I'm going to... Protect yourself. Yeah. And he was like, why would you do that? And I was like, I don't know you. And he's like, you don't know me? I'm this so-and-so. And And I was like, I don't know who that is. I felt terrible. But people feel like they they know, even if you're not a digital sex worker, uh, OnlyFans content creator. Well, that was even before it was on OnlyFans. That was just me on Instagram. People just think that they know you. Just a person on social media, not you. Creepy. But they all are fully aware, like... Please don't touch me. Never do you have consent to touch me. I am terrified of you. Okay. And have you had any run-ins with, (laughs) you called them piggies earlier, your little piggies, like people who say, like, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Have you had any run-ins? Has anyone ever approached you uh, via social media saying, like, you're only fanning with my husband and I want you to stop? 
No, okay. I don't think so. Okay, good. I mean, I don't know if that's even a likely scenario to happen because I don't know what it looks like on there, but. No. So I used to call on uh, dating apps. You used to what? Call. What's that? So you're swiping right on everybody and then they would go to your profile and then they would see that you're a digital creator. So then they would go to your digital creating and subscribe and invest. And there was one time where, actually, I'm not going to tell the story. Okay. I can't. <laughs> what about a feet pic? I always say, like, something I say ridiculous, like, and I mean nothing by it, but, like, when I post a photo on Instagram, I usually, like, cover my feet for no other reason except for, like, it's funny to say no free feet yeah. pics because, like, I should be getting paid. <laughs> um, so a simple photo, you could charge, like, 20 bucks for. Now, there's, like, Feet Finder, and I think it's, like, five bucks or something i'm not on that website okay. but i have friends who are on there and the income that you make on there is not like of income but it is like it'll play a light bill it'll pay your cell phone hmm. so if you just find that you're getting your pedicure and you're like oh let me take some photos and <laughs> drop it on the Why internet not? drop it on the internet <laughs> so i would imagine you probably could sustain your life from OnlyFans, if you're a top creator. Yes, absolutely. But you do... So why do you choose to still have a, a, a job besides being a full-time content creator? Um, real talk, um, I am working on a business right now, business venture. Okay. Um, so I need extra income to make this business come to fruition so that I can stop a lot of things. Okay. Um, but secondary, we're in Texas. The same way that they stop Pornhub is the same way that they can pull longevity. Exactly. Security. So anything could go away. Instagram's down. TikTok might be banned. Blah blah blah. Exactly. Completely it's understand. It's not a sick. That's it's not secure. The income is not secure. Okay. Smart. And Smart businesswoman. Yeah. Well, and you know, what's in one day is not in the next. Um, I've had subscribers that were loyal to me for a year and then leave, like whether that be because their money changed or they found a partner or they're just into whatever Something else. else. That's, you know? I wish you best of luck and I hope you have a good time, but it is what it is. Yeah. You got to keep it moving. Yeah. How many subscribers do you have? Like average? usually like 200, not a lot. Oh my god! Yeah, I get overwhelmed when I'm talking to like three or four different guys on Hinge in one week. <laughs> if you make them pay for your time, you won't. You know what I do say? I'm like, I've had some sex with some shitty men, and I've talked to some shitty men. I might as well start getting paid for it. So imagine me, like my friends that have thousands. Yeah, I have no idea how they do it. No idea, but I. Yeah, get it, girl. Wow. Now, I guess I will say, like, one of my friends, she has thousands of followers, but they can't message her without tipping her a minimum amount. A singular message, you know, is that. So good for her. I, I, I don't have tipping on mine. Like you That's can just a choice? Yeah. Once you subscribe, you can, you can message me and we can communicate. That's just to each their own. Okay. I like that, though. A tip to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> even get in the door but she's been doing it a lot longer than i have and okay. she's got a lot more how did you find yourself in you said a lot of your friends were corn stars where did that come from just i think like i was just so like admired no i was so ad you admired them i admired them okay like the adoration okay same like you know you're like that's amazing i can't believe like you do that like you know i'm not doing that but that's just so, so amazing that like, you are so empowered like i think a lot of people when they think about corn stars they think like oh you're gross you're disgusting like you have no self-worth and for me i was just like I'll never forget, like, the first time I saw a stripper in Vegas. Like, I was a little girl. My grandma was taking me to Jungle Jungle, like, <laughs> on my way to the kids, like, little 
casino, right? Oh my God. And you see these hot ladies like dressed in like jewels, bedazzled up in like jewelry and hair to the nines, like the top tier women full of power. You sit all eyes on them. And I'm like, you know, you don't sexualize people as a child. Instead, you're like, who is this Wonder Woman? Yeah. I want to be just like her. Wow. And who was it? It was Star. Yeah, it was the Star. The stripper. <laughs> and she made money. And I wanted her money. So when I met Corn Stars, I was like, you are so pretty. Like, you're so awesome. You're so cool. Like, And you're making money. Yeah. You are so empowered. You are like... What we were giving away for free, you're getting paid for. So true. Like. So true. How do you do it? Show me your way. Tell me your secrets. And then, you know, a lot of them, my friends are anyways, are nice, straight to the point, upfront, helpful, loving, caring. Yeah. They're very genuinely amazing people. And wildly intelligent. Love that. Yeah, like, that's another thing. It's like, we're taught that they're just like little bimbos, like, ha no. Wildly intelligent creatures. Hmm. As a corn star now, like, I still speak of these corn stars. I'm still so <laughs> fascinated by them. My, like, best of friends, and I get to talk on the phone with them and just... Yeah, tell me about your day. Like, I get is, so happy just to, like, experience time with them. Wow. What a different life. Interesting. <laughs> like, thought-provoking. Very. I will look at porn stars a little differently. Not that I ever thought that they were, like, bimbo-ish, but I was like... I don't know. I guess I've never thought about them as a real human. <laughs> if the ones that haven't made it, like, you know, I've, well, no, I, Pamela Anderson, you know, like, I was thinking, like, the ones that have made it that far, like, they obviously don't have the luxury of, like, posting their opinions on social media. But, you know, she's very opinionated about PETA and animal rights. Mm -hmm. Like, She's wildly intelligent and she knows how to speak with pros when she's talking about animal cruelty. I mean, Mia Khalifa, when everything began with Palestine and Israel, she started naming off the dates for Nakba. And I won't say anything past that because there are many different views and trying to be respectful, but... Yeah. You know, this person that people will just see this Lebanese girl like, oh, you're just another brown girl that, you know, got fucked. And right. She has so many thoughts. She has a brain. Yeah. She's incredibly intelligent. Kim Kardashian. Yeah. I mean. They are who they are because of she's Kim She's a soul-sucking demon state. and I love her. But also, like, you know, this woman's going and... I think she's past the bar. I think she has. Yeah. 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 Wildly intelligent. Yeah. No, I, I think that that's a good way. I've, I kind of always say when people are like, ew, Kim Kardashian or ew, any celebrity, I'm like, but do you know them personally? Why do we hate them when we don't know them personally? Why are we annoyed by them? Like, you can be bothered by their content, but like, why are you so personal about it? But I've never thought that way. And not that I've ever hated a sex worker. Yeah. I've never thought. I guess, too much about that person. But it's kind of nice to maybe be like, no, they're humans. And they have a life outside of this. They don't just do this for 24 hours yeah, a day. No, no. They've probably got a family, and this is how they make their living. Yes. Hmm. The more you know. I know, right? Who would have guessed we were <laughs> still actually humans and not... <laughs> I say humans. I say humans a lot, as in, like... Just be a good human. Like, just yeah. be a good person on this Absolutely. planet. Human. So I say human when I say person. No, totally. I get that. Same, right? Like, they're the same. Yeah. Wow. I'm so happy you... <laughs> well, like, now I want to hear your wild stories. <laughs> I don't know if 
I have any wild. I mean, my like my dating. Someone asked me on Hinge, which it was such a stupid question. I'm very single. Someone asked me on Hinge, how many dates have you been on from this app? And I'm like, what a stupid fucking question. Because first of all, you're not going to like any answer. But I just said, um, somehow too many, but also not enough. Yeah. I'm like, still here, motherfucker. I love that. That's a good saying. <laughs> still here are you gonna take me on one or are you just gonna talk my fucking ear off and in fact if you are pay me for it honestly i don't <laughs> think that i got quality dates until i started like being demanding about dating like take me on a date mm-hmm. i wouldn't go out for a drink if you wanted to go for a drink, then you could take me to dinner or you can take me for coffee. If you wanted to be cheap, you could take me for coffee. If you wanted to spend money, because you're going to spend money on drinks, then you can take me for dinner and we can have a stimulating conversation. But if you're here to serve me alcohol so you could fuck me later, it's not happening. And granted, one in a hundred, that was not the goal. I wasn't going to chance it. Don't go for drinks. I don't mind a drink date, only because I might not like not you enough to stay date. for dinner. Coffee. I am so bored with a coffee date. Then tea. It's just Coke. like, I just, it's the vibe of like an eight in the morning, 10 in the morning coffee. I just, I'm annoyed that we're here. You can have a here. coffee at 2 p.m., girl. But I just, like when they invite, that's what ends up happening. I'm like, I'm annoyed we're here that we're having coffee because I just. Are you upset about a croissant? <laughs> Actually, the past few coffee dates I've been on, I bought my own coffee, which is not about the money, but it's like, it is. you weren't here. No, it is about the money. I know that's what people tell me. It is about the money. If you can't take me out for fucking coffee, this is not a 50-50. I never mind, though. Of course you don't mind, because you're an independent woman, because you've been trained to be an independent woman. That's a whole nother podcast. Story. I know. It's a whole nother podcast. Plug yourself. Where can we find you? You can find me on most platforms <laughs> at Lena Lux, L E N A L U X X E, my dos X. Um, okay. On Instagram, it's Lena period Lux. Okay. And I'll put that in the show notes. But your most favorite place to find me is on X. At Lena Lux, L U X X E. X at Twitter. Oh, do you do? Oh, yeah. X? Really? I gotta get back on there. I've never been one to be on there. It's good. You should get on. It's terrible. Like, Bad Musk owns it, but it's hilarious. It's what Threads really wants to be. And it will probably get there eventually, but no time soon. It's just another platform to remember to do. Okay. Thank you so much for coming and sharing and being so open about OnlyFans, of course, but also about your weight loss journey, your mental health. I love this episode. Yay. I'm so happy that we got together. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, oh, my God. I forgot. A wine of the week. I would really love if our city was fair with its permitting laws okay give me an example like if i do everything up to code when i'm creating something in a building uh-huh i would really fucking love if i could do all that without getting stupid fucking permits to do it that are meaningless and useless just so that way the city could take my money to be like oh yes we viewed it it is correct just come do the inspection whenever I'm done. And if it's not done, then you can charge me. Or if it's not done correctly, you can charge me. Okay. So you're you're building something and going through the building process. Mm -hmm. And there's so many checks and balances and it's really just to and take your money. Thousands and tens of thousands of dollars. And I hate how corrupt our fucking... Well, it's system not just is. our city, honey. It's the, the system. That's why. It's, it's how fucking system. corrupt our system is to not allow small people to build a fucking business without charging us out the ass. Yeah. And if I had the same connections that this one percenter has, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah, you wouldn't be talked to. 
Exactly. That's definitely a wine of the week. Keep going, though. It'll be worth it. Jump through the hoops in the end. It didn't even matter. <laughs> I mean, it'll matter. It'll just be part of the story that you're telling. No, it's the Lincoln Park song. Oh. <laughs> and in the end, it doesn't even matter. Oh, my God. Lincoln Park. <laughs> Love. I heard that Chester. so long. Okay, well, perfect. We're going to end there. Love you, Winers. See you next week. Bye.